Andy, I love the shaky, shaky machine. <laughs> what are you doing with it? Right, this is a shaking table, it's basically. A shaky, shaky machine, but That's yeah, a shaky, shaky machine. Yeah. And we are simulating the flows you would have in a drain and sewer system, and we see how these different products break up. If they're disintegrating, no problem. If they're not breaking up, problem. Correct. First, good old toilet roll. Oh, yeah. And that, that has been on for 30 minutes. That has broken up pretty well. Not a problem. And it certainly wouldn't end up in the fatberg. This one is marked as a flushable moist toilet tissue. Next, a wet wipe made by Andrex that's labelled as flushable. It's broken up reasonably well. If that was flushed in a sewer and caught on a bit of rough pipe, it would soon break up. Yeah, OK, good. And clearly a big difference between that and this one, which is just a, a fully formed wet wipe. That's correct. This has been on for three hours and it's still just as it was when it went in. And if that went on for another two or three days, it wouldn't be any different. That is marked in a great big label on the front, flushable. How are the manufacturer getting away with that? That's a good question. Are they getting away with it, actually, by saying that flushable just means it will get down the toilet? The dictionary term of flushable, it's nothing to do with what blocks sewers. They could mm. say it gets round the U-bend. So what you really want is you want a mark and it says whether it's sewer friendly or not. That's right, yes. New guidelines recommend that any wipes marked flushable need to pass a series of tests to prove they break down in the sewer. Any that don't must have a big Do Not Flush logo on the front of the pack. But there's currently no regulation to force companies to comply. We've been testing the fatberg for dangerous bacteria, the kind that can make you seriously ill. How's the bacteria seem getting on? Oh, that's very interesting, actually. I'll um, be the judge of that. Carry on. <laughs> so, what we found is uh, some listeria. Uh huh. Campylobacter. We've also found lots of E. coli. These are all bacteria that give us vomiting and diarrhea. We're also looking for bacteria that are antibiotic resistant. Uh huh. Justin's coated one of the agar dishes with antibiotics and spread the fatberg on top. Any bacteria living inside should have been killed off. What you find is I've got bacteria growing there. The antibiotic is having no effect? Yes. So these microbes that you're finding that are resistant, are they a problem for the public? There's a whole variety of different things you can cause. And they could kill you. People could potentially um, die of the infections mm -hmm. because the antibiotics won't work. The fatberg is full of superbugs. They're one of the greatest threats to global health, according to the World Health Organization. And that's not all we found. They could be potentially new strains of resistant bacteria that we don't even know about yet. But they could. And could they get out of the sewers? I guess that's the, that's the real worry, isn't it? That would be something that would concern the public. Is that a danger? Potentially, yes. We wrote to the manufacturer of Peppa Pig hand and body wipes, Jellyworks Healthcare Limited, about the role wet wipes play in the formation of fatbergs. They say the reason we originally stated flushable was because the wipes were small enough to flow through the system without causing blockages in the home. They're now in the process of changing the packaging design, removing the flushable label and adding a warning not to flush down the toilet on the reverse.